Hello again. In the first video in the series, we looked at how to build a simple function for MATLAB or Octave. So now this is um, in the context of your numerical assignment three for the course MEC 454 and MEC 6761. We are going to build a script that actually calls our function from, uh, from assignment one. So here's our example function in the first video. This is isentropic underscore EX. This is the same function if I double click, if I double click here, then I get my editor window. This is, again, this is GNU Octave and not MATLAB. So the environment looks a little bit different, but it still has the same functionality or the same basic functionalities as MATLAB. So here's our function, which computes or takes as inputs here in the round brackets, it takes a value for a pressure that I called P1. It takes a compression ratio R, and it takes a value of a specific heat ratio K. It returns two outputs. It returns a pressure that I called here P2. And it returns also a value C, which is nonsensical. This has no physical meaning. I just put it in this example just for the purpose of returning more than one output uh, variables or more than one output arguments or one uh, yeah. here we have the three lines so here we're computing the value of p2 here we're computing a function zeta which is completely internal to this function nothing outside this function knows that zeta exists and here we compute c which actually depends on zeta uh, which is completely again is completely uh, defined or completely defined and used in this function but not outside of it now with this function now we're going to build a script so this particular file isentropic ex is a function file or it's a matlab file that defines a function and you'll notice we named it so the name of the file is the same name as the function itself with the extension m now we're going to make a script, and a script is a little bit different. A script does not have, here let me bring back our example function, a script does not have this first definition line here, function. It won't have this, it's simply going to be a set of, uh, of different um, commands, just as I would write them in the command window, but when we run it, now Octave or MATLAB is going to be able to run Maybe a very complex suite of uh, commands that uh, I don't have to copy and paste manually one by one. And it's going to be able to do this automatically. So here we're going to go into the editor and I'm going to create a new file. So in Octave, I'm going to click this new script button or a new file. And let me save it right away. Just go control S and it saves it in the same directory by default. And I'm going to call this engine dot m there we go and now this is my script file so now let me be uh let me stick to good practice here i'm going to put comments so in matlab comments are defined by the percent sign and here i want to make a nice title block so i'll make a whole lines of percents there we go three percent and i'll go internal combustion engine uh, simulation software here I'll end the line with the same three so that it's roughly symmetric I'm gonna go and select this entire line I'll control C control V and we're gonna do this written by Professor Charles Senga Kianda here there we go and if I was very picky Oh, here, let me double up this line, control C, control V, so that now I have this nice title block. Maybe I can put the date, that might be a good idea. Enter, and then I would put past modification. Today is February, February, today is the, oh, I actually forgot. Today is February 4th, 2019. There we go. And now I have a nice title block. And since each line starts with at least one percent sign, it's what we call a comment. There we go. So now actually I could come in, I'm gonna save this. I could go into my function and add some comments. This is there has no there are no comments there. I'm gonna add a comment and it's 
good practice to write what this function actually does. So function isentropic ex colon computes the isentropic compression or expansion. And I actually like to do this. I actually like to list inputs. And then I'll write P1, initial pressure, P, oh, R. And here, just like I lined up all of the equal signs, I'm going to line up all of the colons. R is the compression ratio through the process. And then I'm going to put K. This is a specific. A uh, specific heat ratio. Oh, and here let me put this is unitless. This doesn't have units. So I'm going to bring it to the back here. This is also unitless. Here I'm going to put expect units of pressure. Um, just because here there's not, just because here there's not really. Uh, there's, there's no constant, there's no physical constant here. So it's not obligated that P1 be in a certain pressure unit. And then I'm going to list the outputs. So the outputs are P2. I'm going to line up. Oh, I'd like to have a space here. There we go. Line up. This is the final pressure after process. Say here, same units as P1 percent. Now let's see, the other one is C. This is nonsensical output. It's actually unitless. It actually makes sense because R is unitless, K is unitless, and so a unitless value plus a unitless value gives me just a pure number that doesn't have units. And the square root of a pure number just gives, also gives me a unitless quantity. Let me save this. Now I have a very nice uh, comment block at the top of my function that details everything one needs to know without having to read the entire file. It tells me sort of in human speak what's going on. Okay, so let me go back to my script engine. Now here I'm going to have a oh, initial value definitions. This is where I'm going to define the initial state of my the initial state of my uh, engine. So P1 is equal to I'm going to say my initial pressure is 100, and now I'm going to give it. Now I'm specifying units. What is this 100? I'm going to say these are kilopascals. I'm going to make a note that these are kPa's. Then T1 is equal to 280, and these are kelvins. Kelvin is big K. There we go. I'm going to say, actually, I'm going to define the units. I'm also going to define what it means. So this is the initial pressure before compression. And in brackets here, I'll put the units. Initial temperature before compression in Kelvin. Okay, let me line up the units. And first thing we notice is you'll notice that we can put comments, if I put a percent sign, then the rest of the line is comments. But then the first part of this line actually is uh, actually is a value, or actually is a command that Octave is going to interpret. Um, by force of habit, I've put a semicolon right here at the end of each of these lines, and that is just going to suppress the output. So here I'll press Control S, and if I come into the command window and then I call engine, it looks like nothing happened, but here in my workspace, I see that T1 and P1 have been created. So now if I ask T1, I see that T1 is equal to 280, P1, P1 is equal to 100. Okay, I could take those off if I wanted to because this is a script. It's a script is not going to be called by another script or another function, and so this would only run once, so I could let it show me what these what it's doing. Let's do that, actually. Let's enable the output, the screen output. Okay. 
Now the first step, oh, initial value definitions. I also have to define a compression ratio. I'm going to put 8.1. So this is compression ratio here. Let's call it RC. This is going to be the overall compression ratio. Uh, compression ratio of the engine. And here I'm going to note, we should know, but this is unitless. I'm going to define k is equal to 1.37. Uh, 1 this is the ratio of specific heats. This is also unitless. First process compression. So now I'm going to use, instead of writing, I could just compute directly. So I know that P2 is equal to P1 times R to the K. But then if I do this process several times, I'm going to have to write these, or write this exact same math over and over again. And so instead of doing this, I'm going to use the function that we created before, this isentropic EX. You can see it here. It does exactly this. It computes the pressure after an isentropic process. So here I'm going to say P2 and C2 are equal to isentropic EX. And let's see, what is the what are the inputs? The inputs of are P1, R, and K. So I'm going to pass P1, R, K. Save. Just hit Control S. Now let's go and try our function or our script again. I'm going to call engine. Actually here, let me start from the beginning. You see these are already saved. Let me just clear. Now my workspace is cleared. I can make sure that my entire script works correctly. So I'm going to type engine. And let's see, we actually define this is P1 is equal to 100, T1, RC. Oops, error. R undefined near line 16. Let's see, it's an engine right here. I passed it a value R, but what I defined was RC. Oops, this is by habit. I'll just add a C. There we go. So P1, RC, and K. Let me save again. We come here, we're going to clear the workspace. Here we do CLC. This clears the screen. Now let's call our, our script again, engine. And now it defines P1, T1, RC, K. And then it computes P2 and C2. This is great. So that is the pressure after having compressed from 100, 100 kPa by a compression ratio of 8.1. Now in your actual assignment, your second process would be heat release. So here let's make something that's physically meaningless. So let's say that this variable, uh, well, here, let's define a heat release Q is equal to oh, uh, 1800. And this is going to be specific heat release or heat input, rather. And this is in units of kilojoules per kilogram. And we'll define a We'll define, I'm just trying to make the units match. Here, let me make it so the units don't match. It doesn't really matter. So here we're going to compute the pressure after combustion. P3 is equal to Q divided by C2. This makes no physical sense. This is purely so we get, oops, I want to keep the output. This is purely so we, uh, we can compute something. And then we'll say C3 is equal to Oh, C3 is equal to C2 divided by 2. Save. Okay. And now again, let me line up. So this is now my state after combustion. Let me go and run my... Let me go and run my script again. Engine. And now it computes P1, T1, R, C, K, and Q. Or it, it, cal it stores those as inputs. It calls our function to compute P2 and C2, and then it computes P3 and C3. Oh, P3 is lower than P2 here. Let's just, let's just fix that. 
Yeah, this should be P2 plus. There we go. Let's run this again so it's, it makes no physical sense again, but at least, yes, we have numbers that we sort of expect. The pressure goes up after combustion. Okay. Now we want to do we want to do the third process. I'll put a, a comment statement. Third process expansion. And now we're going to expand by half of this compression ratio. Why half, you ask? Uh, just to make you uh, to give you an example, uh, so that you can uh, so that you can use this in. Uh, when dealing with the diesel uh, diesel cycle. So now I want P4 and C4 after expansion. So I'm going to call my example function again, isentropic EX. And now my inputs to this process are P3. And I said I want to expand by half of the compression ratio. So actually that means it's RC divided by 2 and K but now I have to be careful RC divided by 2 is going to give me a value of 4.05 but that would mean a compression so I'm going to here I'm going to put a I'm going to raise this to the minus 1 so this is now 1 over half the compression ratio so this will now correspond to an expansion Press enter, let me save this. So now let us come back. I'm gonna clear the workspace, clear the screen, and then let me call engine. And yes, this works. So now we have our inputs defined in the script. P1 through Q. We have our first process where we call the isentropic function to get P2 and C2. We computed P3 and C3 for now from uh, knowing basic uh, combustion principles. And P4 and C4, notice now that the pressure is going down. Now we computed from calling our same function again. It's an isentropic process. We just gave it an expansion ratio, if you want. We gave it the value of the compression ratio to go uh, from a high pressure to a low pressure through an isentropic process. So in summary, let's see. This is the overall structure of, uh, of the script that you would write to compute the ideal cycle. You have your initial, I think, in your, uh, in your problem statement. It states that those, uh, those values should be queried from the user. So you can use a function that asks the user to type numbers in. Afterwards, you would call the function don't hesitate to fix your function from uh, your first numerical assignment. If um, if you get feedback saying uh, that it wasn't uh, wasn't good, so you should make a function that is closer to this uh, particular layout. The second process is heat release, and the third process is again an isentropic process where you use the same function that you've written for your numerical assignment one. I think with all of this information, there are some slight differences, but you should be able to complete uh, your numerical assignment three.